Hi, today welcome to Unit 6B, Day 2. We're going to find sides of right triangles using the trigonometric ratios so, ka, toa, sine, cosine, and tangent that we discussed in the last lesson. The most important thing that you need to make sure you do is whatever calculator you're using, your calculator has to be in degree mode because we're going to be working with the angles of the right triangle and our angles are in the units of degrees. So your calculator has to be in degree mode. A lot of calculators do not default to degree mode. So on your, if you're using your phone or you're using a computer calculator, you might have to do a little investigation to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If you're using the TI-84+, Plus, which is what I would recommend because that's the one you're going to have available to you when we take the test, you're going to do these following steps. Once you open your calculator, which I have done over here, you're going to press mode. And mode is the second button right next to the blue second key. When you click on mode, you're going to see it's all defaulted to everything on the left hand side for all the modes that the calculator has. Okay, We want to click the arrow keys to highlight degree and then press enter. So my arrow keys here, you can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard. We want to highlight that word degree. So I'm going to hit down, down, and you can see it flashing. And then I have degree flashing, but notice radian is still highlighted. We want to make sure that that degree word, that the highlighting moves over to degree. So we have to make sure we press enter. And now you can see radian is no longer highlighted. The word degree is highlighted. So we are good to start working. Okay, to get back to our calculator screen, the last step is press the second key, the blue one, and then mode, and that'll take us back. So I'm going to hit the second key right here, and then mode, and that takes me back to my calculator, and I'm working in degrees. Okay, you will need to do this every time you open up this calculator, it won't default back. When you reopen it, it's going to default back to everything on the left being highlighted, and you'll have to get that degree again. You can hit second and mode to quit out of that menu screen. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do, and I'll try to remind you before each activity we do during this unit. Okay, all right, so when we're going to solve for sides, it is a four step process. Okay, a four-step process. The first step is label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse in relation to the acute angle that you know. It's important that we're doing the acute angle. Okay, that we're looking in relation to an acute angle. Okay, then you're going to circle the side that you already know how long it is and the side that you're trying to find. And then identify which trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, uses those sides. Okay. Step three, we're going to write a proportion. Remember, proportion is two equal ratios or two equal fractions. And then the last step we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply that proportion so that we can solve it. So we're going to find the acute angle and label it. I should highlight label. We're going to label our sides based on the acute angle. We're going to circle the side we know and the side we're trying to find. We're going to set up our function as a proportion, and then we're going to cross multiply and solve. Okay, so let's go and look at doing that. Step one, label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse in relation to the angle that you know. So the acute angle that you know. I have my 90 degree angle here. This angle up here is not labeled. But this angle over here is 32 degrees. I could use the fact that the 3 add up to 180 to find this angle, but I really just need the one acute angle. And remember in the last lesson, we used that information to be able to figure out where we were standing and the relation we were at. And I put a little smiley face right here. Okay. And then remember, I always start with the hypotenuse First. I always label that one first because it's easy to find. It's across from the right angle. Okay, so then if I look where my smiley face is and I draw, I highlight that leg, I know that's my adjacent side. 
which means the one left all the way across really far away from my smiley face as far away from my smiley face as I can get is my opposite side it's on the opposite far away side from the smiley face okay so that's step one just labeling the triangle like we did in the last lesson okay step two is going to be to circle the side we know and the side we are trying to find. So we're going to circle two things. The side we know how long it is. So notice I don't know anything about the opposite as far as how long it is. But I do know that the adjacent is 20 units long. And then the side I'm trying to find where my x is, is my hypotenuse. So the sides that I'm circling are my adjacent side and my hypotenuse. Okay, and then it says which trig function uses both of those. So when we look at our trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, we remember the acronym so, ka, toa. Okay, and then if I look at the two that I circled, I circled the adjacent side. So what I'll do a lot is I'll put little check marks by the A's for adjacent. And we circled the hypotenuse. So I'm going to put check marks by the H's for hypotenuse. And then which trig function uses both the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Not the sine, not the tangent, but the cosine. So I know I'm going to be using cosine. Okay, that's the function I'm going to use. Step three is to use that function to set up a proportion. So I'm going to come down here. I know a proportion is two fractions that are equal. Okay. What we did yesterday, yesterday we said the cosine, sine, or tangent in the last lesson of the angle, which in this case is 32 degrees. So instead of putting the letter that represents the angle, I'm going to put the number of degrees. Equals, and then we did the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 20 over the hypotenuse is x. Okay, so that's what we're doing when we set up the, for fu the function. When we want to turn it into a proportion, all we have to do to make this be two equal fractions is we just have to take that, the right side's already a fraction, it's already a ratio. To turn the left side into a fraction or a ratio, all I have to do is put it over one. And that doesn't change this value. It just places, it just divides it by one, okay, which you can do to any number to make it a fraction. So now step four is to cross multiply and solve. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cross multiply. Again, I like to start wherever my x is. And I'm going to say x times the cosine of 32 equals, and then on the other side, I'm just going to have 20 times 1, which is just 20. 20 times 1 is 20. And now all we have to do is finish solving. I have x times this value. So the opposite of multiplication, to get rid of that value, I need to divide it out, right? When you're trying to untime something, I'm going to divide both sides by this whole thing that's multiplied to the x. So by the cosine of 32. Cosine of 32. So I'm going to cancel here and here, and I'm just going to have the x. So x equals 20 divided by the cosine of 32. Okay, so this is when, we're, when we have x all by itself like this, that means we're ready to go to the calculator. So I'm going to come over here to the calculator, and I'm going to do 20 divided by the cosine. We have our sine, our cosine, and our tangent buttons right here, two rows above the 7, 8, and 9. We want cosine, and notice it opens a parenthesis because it knows there has to be a number that goes with the cosine. So it opens those parentheses right there, which means we want to make sure that afterwards we close it. Cosine of 32, okay? Now, those pr that closing parentheses, it's a lot like a seatbelt in your car. It's In this case, it's not going to affect the answer if you don't put it there, but sometimes it does, right? So we always want to 
put our seatbelt on, even though a lot of times we get to our destination and we would have been okay if we didn't have it on. But just in case, we want to make sure we're safe and we want to put that seatbelt on. So you'll notice I'm always going to close my parentheses after the angle just to make sure that I'm safe and to guarantee that I'm going to get the correct answer. Okay? And when I hit enter, I get an answer of 23.5835868807. And we're going to round this to three decimal places. So when I come over here and I look at three places, 583, then I look after that 3 and see it's a 5, so that means I'm going to bump that 3 to a 4. So 23.584. 23.584 is how long that side is. Okay, so that side X, when I scroll up here, this piece here is 23.584 units long. Okay? Alright, in the next video when we come back, we will practice with these practice problems finding x. So again, we're going to find our acute angle and label our triangle, then circle the side we know and the side we want to find, set up our proportion, and cross multiply to solve. Okay, so in the next video, we will practice with these practice problems. Okay, come on back. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.